We have to put down the roots of democracy. This is the responsibility of people of our generation. Aung San Suu Kyi gave up her freedom to challenge Myanmar's military rule, won the Nobel Peace Prize, and later established the country's first civilian government since 1962. I think I represent the human faces of the movement for democracy in Burma. But her inspirational fight for democracy was tarnished after she defended Myanmar's military over accusations of genocide against Rohingya Muslims. She was an icon of democracy, but she became an accomplice. Suu Kyi is the daughter of national hero General Aung San, who helped negotiate what was then Burma's independence from Britain before he was assassinated in 1947. Educated at Oxford, she returned to her native country in 1988. A military dictatorship was in control and Burma was heavily divided among different ethnic groups. Suu Kyi co-founded the National League for Democracy, or NLD party, the same year. She was immediately seen as the kind of young, charismatic leader that may be needed by the people in this time of struggle. But her political activity enraged the military, especially after the NLD won a majority in Parliament in 1990, a result that was not recognised. She spent about 15 years in house arrest in three different periods. Each time she became a bit of a thorn in the side of the military junta. They decided that it was safer to put her back under house arrest than to have her free to make speeches. The military renamed the country Myanmar and isolated itself from the world while Suu Kyi became an international symbol of democracy. She was released from house arrest in 2010, two years after the junta drafted a new constitution. The military high command felt more confident in allowing Aung San Suu Kyi and the NLD to come back into the political sphere because they felt that they had enough protections for their own interests to enable some form of democratic practice to unfold. The NLD won the general election five years later and Suu Kyi became the country's de facto leader. <laughs> For many ethnic minorities, it always seemed that she will be a very natural ally. Um, the National League of Democracy has promised to reconcile um, this deeply divided society and has promised to work together with different ethnic minority factions. However, instead of bridging divides, she seemed more intent on shoring up electoral support. The ethnic conflict in the country has actually continued and even intensified since Aung San Suu Kyi's rise to power. Many of her erstwhile supporters from the ethnic minority communities have since felt betrayed. More than 740,000 Rohingya have fled what the UN calls a genocide in Myanmar's Rakhine state for neighbouring Bangladesh since 2017. A UN report alleged the military waged a brutal campaign of rape, torture and murder in Rakhine and called for generals to be prosecuted. Myanmar denied the charges and said it was targeting terrorists. In 2019, Suu Kyi defended her country against accusations of genocide at the UN's top court, calling the allegations incomplete and misleading. Human rights groups reacted, stripping her of prestigious awards and accolades. A lot of that was withdrawn from her, a, a little bit unfairly, because most of what happened in those months was beyond her control, but also a little bit fairly, because she did very little to try to build bridges between the Burma Buddhist majority community that she herself comes from and the Muslim minority that was being targeted for hate speech and violence by her compatriots. But her popularity has not dimmed in Myanmar. In 2020, her party claimed an overwhelming victory in the election, granting it another five years in government. But the military refused to recognise her victory, alleging fraud. In 2021, it took control in a coup, declaring a state of emergency and putting Suu Kyi back under house arrest. It seemed to have come down to a struggle between Aung San Suu Kyi as a person in power or in quasi-power during the last years and uh, General Min Online, who is the commander-in-chief of uh, Myanmar's military. General Min Online has long thought of himself as the next president of Myanmar. The coup is a devastating blow to Myanmar's halting moves towards democracy at a time when the Burmese people may need it most.